All right. Okay, so the first speaker after the break. Uh, so everyone's got a new set of coffee in them and is, is ready to talk. I, w I wanted to uh, reiterate that these posters around the room are the product of a, a variety of student projects that, that we ran, uh, facilitated by the Ware Lab, which I lead uh, here at the Johnson Space Center. We had uh, University of Alaska, uh, Pratt Institute of New York. I know I got to name them all. Minnesota, Texas A&M, uh, Georgia Tech, Virginia Tech. So students from across the country worked on these projects for us. Uh, specifically targeting uh, uh, generally a narrow set of uh, problems that were presented by folks here at JSC, uh, engineers and scientists. Uh, so I encourage you to look at, look at them and, and as Bob said, talk to the professors. You're welcome to talk to me. Um, and then they, the, each of the projects had a mentor. Uh, some of the mentors are here as well. And I'm sure they'd be uh, happy to chat about the projects, the problems uh, that these students were trying to solve, uh, helping us, NASA, uh, really advance human space exploration and, and get us to Mars. So uh, that uh, additional public service announcement aside, I will talk uh, briefly about some of the work that we're doing in the Wear Lab, the Wearable Electronics Application and Research Lab uh, here at JSC, uh, specifically uh, targeting uh, rapid development of wearable technology. Uh, as I get into that, I did want to want to highlight that I, I think we're all, um, as either users or developers of wearable technology, we're trying to do the same thing. We're, we're trying to maximize productivity of people doing tasks, uh, whatever that might be, with while providing insight to people observing those tasks, while um, uh, providing insight for uh, the performer, the user, or the test themselves, um, without interfering with those activities that they're already doing. Uh, here at, at NASA and, and on the International Space Station, as we, as we go beyond low Earth orbit, um, there's a, there are many challenges that uh, lead us to be very interested uh, in in maximizing productivity of the crew. So our, you know, we have uh, six crew members on the ISS right now. Sometimes we have we have three. Um, as we go beyond, we'll likely have fewer than six uh, astronauts doing the tasks. So we have a very limited amount of crew time available to perform the experience, experiments, the maintenance, the um, the medical uh, science and other activities that we need them to perform. And then, of course, the the years of training, the the uh, army of ground crew. Uh, uh, operators and things. The, this infrastructure is all very expensive, so we, we uh, have a very strong interest in being as productive as possible uh, for the, the few uh, very valuable hours that the crew has there. So, so what we're trying to do is, is maximize the time that our crew has on productive tasks and minimize the time they have for other additional tasks. We want the interfaces that they have to be natural. Uh, we want uh, displays, controls, interfaces that are intelligent, that adapt to their context, their need, their environment. Uh, and then, uh, as we've seen conversations this morning, we want to augment their capabilities. So, so we, have, we have a sensor somewhere in the International Space Station. We want to provide that sensor data to the crew members so that they can make informed decisions. We want to lower the barrier between the crew and their vehicle so that the, the vehicle can monitor what the crew is doing and adaptively support them. And then we want the crew to be able to, we want the information to go the other way. So we want the crew to be able to monitor, monitor the vehicle as well so they have the information they need uh, to make decisions in real time. So we're trying to, to optimize that system so that our, our human and our vehicle and our robotic systems and every other element of uh, this human exploration system is working together uh, to accomplish the task and be as productive as possible because that time is valuable and very limited. So my lab, the Ware Lab, um, we work in, in uh, putting uh, all these uh, electronic capabilities on the human body, as many of you do uh, here in the audience today. So we've done some work in electronic textiles and we have partners here uh, across JC that also do work in that area. Uh, integrating electronics into textiles specifically. Um, we do uh, have the capabilities to design, manufacture, test, uh, flight certify electronics. Uh, um, my co-lead in the lab, Haifa Moses, who, who will present later today, is, is there in the back, uh, is our expert on usability, testing, and analysis. Um, and then we work extensive with the, extensively with the universities, as you can see from uh, the myriad of posters around the room today. Um, we also have partners who support us in, uh, internally here at JSC, 
with 3D printing, soft goods design, um, app development, and other things, uh, really so that we as a team um, are able to pursue uh, these goals. So the, uh, there's some Mac formatting issues in PowerPoint, but the, uh, what I wanted to talk about primarily today was what we call the modular wearable architecture. So the modular wearable architecture that we've been developing in the Wear Lab was, was uh, specifically intended to allow us to accelerate our development turnaround time so that as needs are identified, we can uh, develop quality prototypes on familiar tools with, with known data interfaces so that we can integrate with off-body systems efficiently so that we can continue to test and iterate, find what we're doing wrong, and and produce uh, uh, the next iteration that fixes those minor problems as we go. So uh, the modular wearable architecture is composed of three components. So we have a baseboard, uh, which I'll talk about a bit more today. We have a data management system and middleware, uh, which you'll hear a presentation on uh, focused on uh, Mobi this afternoon. And then we have wearability resources uh, that help us uh, do what sometimes engineers aren't always good at, which is think about the actual user. Um, and who's going to use it, what context are going to use it in, and, and Haifa will speak a bit more about that this afternoon as well. But my job here is to tell you a bit more about the, uh, this wearable baseboard that we've developed. So the intent here is that uh, we've, we've created a common platform with some basic features that help us jumpstart uh, wearable design strictly from a hardware perspective here. So this is, uh, uh, you can see a earlier version we had uh, in 2014, we've, uh, we've uh, modified that here in 2015, and I'll talk a bit more about how we applied that to a, a wearable personal CO2 monitor uh, for the International Space Station. Uh, and we, I, I don't have a picture of it here, but we just finished, uh, we just received a, uh, we'll say version 3.1 that fixes some of the bugs that we found in the development platform uh, or adds some additional features to that uh, that we developed previously. So um, the board folds over on itself. In the middle picture there, you can see the black uh, box, the black cylinder there, is a, uh, is a commercial off-the-shelf CO2 sensor, and our board's folded up, and you can see it in a little white, uh, white box there. Uh, so uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about our, one of our applications for this baseboard. Uh, actually, I am wearing it right now. So we have a little uh, uh, clip-on carbon dioxide sensor that's uh, flown to the International Space Station last month. The crew uh, clip it on to, to their garments, just like I had here, uh, mm -hmm. with the intent that it'll monitor their individual CO2 exposure. So we have uh, uh, battery life on the order of four to five and a half days, depending on the Bluetooth uh, connection, uh, and the, the crew's intended to wear it for the duration of, of that time. Uh, so during sleep, during exercise, during other activities so that we can provide the uh, uh, data to our research and operations communities so they can make better informed decisions, conduct additional research really about the impacts of CO2 in space. So this was built around that wearable baseboard that uh, we mentioned and um, just as a demonstrator of the uh, rapid turnaround time. Uh, it was about uh, 12 months from project start to delivery. We just launched in March. Uh, this year, and we're starting operations uh, in the next couple of months. Uh, the, in, a, in addition, you know, during these 12 months, uh, in, in addition to certifying the baseboard for the use on the International Space Station, we uh, were uh, doing iPad app development, um, uh, server integration, the developed testing tools, and conducted several rounds of, of user testing and the, those things, making sure that. When, once it get up, gets to the ISS, the crew actually wants to wear it, uh, which uh, we, we really try to keep at the forefront of, of our design process. So uh, the baseboard that I've talked about isn't always the right answer. Uh, there are uh, additional options that may have more limited capability than what I, what I had on the chart earlier, but, uh, but can be cheaper uh, off-the-shelf devices that uh, that can still get the job done. Some tools that we work with in the wear lab, wear lab and you all may be familiar with others, uh, we, use, we use the Bean pictured there on the right, the Intel Edison is, is in the picture below, um, and there's various other boards that, that allow us to rapidly uh, get a design, uh, uh, kind of 
prototypes, get an idea uh, baselined, uh, let us do some initial testing, some initial user testing, uh, test uh, integration approaches, and, and then um, allow us to iterate quickly. So uh, also in this process, as you can see from the posters around the room, we, let, we do quite a bit of leveraging of, of student projects. So we find that we look out ahead on what challenges we may face, either in wearable technology or otherwise, uh, as, as we look to advance and develop new capabilities. And we can see where we're going to run into some challenges. With the student projects, um, and I'd encourage all of you to leverage uh, universities that, uh, that you may have connections to, uh, we can take a bite-sized problem and give it to a student team, or we can take a larger problem and work with a professor or, or graduate students. And, and we've found that, that they are able to come, come up with some pretty incredible results. They're able to uh, think about a problem within their specific domain, whether it be uh, human factors or electrical engineering or apparel design or industrial design, whatever it might be, uh, we find that the, those unique perspectives are really an advantage for, a, for us when we, when we get the results back and uh, uh, that, uh, that, that they can turn those things around in, in four or five months. We have a new approach, a new concept, and, and it really helps our, our design process. So just to uh, reiterate what I've talked about briefly is, is the baseboard, uh, the electronics aspects of that. Uh, rapid turnaround uh, design approach that, that we work on, um, but uh, you'll see presentations uh, later today on the data management middleware system and the, the human factors and some of the challenges faced with uh, putting multiple uh, wearable devices on a person and, and making sure they're, they're still interested in wearing those things. Uh, so here's uh, my contact info and, and the HIFAS contact info who, who you hear from later. So thank you.